Let's start with the by-election, shall we? Stratford and Urmston, already a Labour seat, but the Tories have seen a big cut in their share of the vote, haven't they? So should they be worried at all by that? Yes, they, clearly they should be. But this is one of those results, and Murray gave a very good analysis just now, where the result itself is no surprise. Each of the parties can say, well, it was good for us. Labour got to 70%, and that's a very challenging figure. The Conservatives went down by 12%, which is actually less than the opinion polls were indicating. And there's a smaller swing than two weeks ago at the Chester by-election, which we discussed here. So it's disappointing, but not bad for the Conservatives, pleasing for the Labour Party. Very low turnout. Often you see protest votes at by-elections yeah. mid-term, don't you? So how much can we read into this as far as a general election is concerned? Very little. Uh, uh, by-elections, as you say, uh, people register protest votes. If you look back at swings in other parliaments, swings in this parliament, I've just referred to Chester, we've had Wakefield, they were larger swings than, than this swing against the government. This is mid-range, and in most cases, the seats then revert back to the party that held it previously if they change hands. So nothing astonishing in relation to this swing, quite normal. Well, some of the Tory MPs nearby, Sir Graham Brady, for example, very close by, will they be feeling a little bit anxious? I think Sir Graham and, and other local MPs will be feeling anxious because of problems in terms of local elections that have been going on for several years. There's been a trend away from the Conservatives in that belt of South, South and West Manchester. So, yes, they will be concerned, but, um, the, as Murray indicated, you've got the local elections next May and people will be looking, has the government solved the industrial relations issues? Is inflation coming down? It started coming down this week. Uh, is the government considered to be a credible manager in terms of issues such as the Northern Ireland Protocol? Well, yes, and on the issue of strikes, obviously people have been seeing them over the last few weeks. They've got weeks stretching ahead of yeah. industrial action uh, on the calendar. What is that doing to the government's reputation and Rishi Sunak's image as a Prime Minister in control? Does it look like that is being damaged? The RCN, clearly one doesn't want to dispute with any part of the NHS. That's a very difficult problem. Um, in terms of judgments for a general election, we're a year and a half, two years away from a general election. The other issues, like the railways, etc., we're in a very difficult post-COVID set of circumstances. It's difficult to manage because they're coming all at the same time. But the polls are actually showing an erosion of support, still general support, for the trade unions, but an erosion of that support uh, as they run on, and particularly the rail unions uh, striking over Christmas and therefore keeping families apart. But what about the health strikes, the, the, the nurses going out on strike? How difficult is that for Rishi Sunak? And how much has he got the party on board on this? We read in the papers this morning that there are four former ministers who are, are calling for the pay review body, which uh, the government is keen to stress they're following their recommendations. Yes. They're saying that you need to go back to them because that's out of date now. Before I went into the Lords, I used to spend my time negotiating with trade unions on the management side. So I've negotiated with most of the major trade unions uh, over many years. Uh, and people from outside the negotiations pontificating about what should be done always used to irritate me. Um, and so I'm not going to start doing it. And I'm talking here about management colleagues who were not involved in the negotiations. Leave it to the negotiators. Leave it. They have to report to the Prime Minister, to the head of the RCN and the like. Um, but uh, it can't go on an excessive length of time because that will uh, stretch the credibility of the Prime Minister um, because disputes in the NHS are not what any government wants. Well, yes, and do you think that the government can stick to its current line or does it, is it going to have to shift its position, do you think? I, I, as I say, having spent many years negotiating, the answer is I don't know. Uh, it's in the position of looking inwards, it's getting the advice from the negotiators, it's getting the advice from the Health Secretary. Uh, it, they'll make a judgement on, on a day-by-day -day basis. And the general argument is we haven't got the money to, to give in to these pay demands, but also they're saying if we pay inflation meeting or busting mm. pay rises, that in itself is inflationary. Do you think that message cuts through to the public? 
I think in part it cuts through, but not... There is a natural sympathy towards the health service unions, which makes it more difficult to negotiate with. Um, there... The pay board, which is what the health secretary is referring to, very clearly made a recommendation. The people you referred to are saying, well, look at it, it was several months ago, it was pre-invasion of Ukraine, pre-gas prices and the like. So it's going to be a difficult one to tackle. The other, one, other trade disputes, the likes of the railways, for example, and the civil service, much more easy to do, deal with. Even the rail unions, working from home is so much easier now that actually the impact is far less than it might have been a few years ago. And what about the impact on labour uh, of strikes? Uh, Rishi Sunak, very keen, whenever he can, yes. to, 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 to paint the unions as, as being in the control of union barons. He talks about labour, uh, them being Labour's pay... unions being Labour's paymasters. Um, I mean, to what extent is that effective, do you think, in trying to shift some of the blame for the strikes off the Tories? Oh, there's no question that it is the natural tactic of the Conservatives, of the government, is to show the Labour Party in the hands of the of the, bar the union barons. Whether that cuts through heavily or not, I'm not sure. But Keir Starmer's walking a fine line because he said Labour MPs, Labour spokesmen, should not be going on the picket lines. And some have done. And whether they're spokesmen or spokeswomen, they, they are facing an issue themselves. It's a fine line for both sides, but it's a bigger problem for the government than it is for the opposition.